Again, welcome to CS101, Introduction to Programming Using Python. This lab will cover chapter three of our course textbook, which is Decision Structures and Boolean Logic. Our main objective is to solve two problems using the Python, again, decision control structures. So our first problem is to write a program that will ask the user for a number in a range of one through seven. Now the program should display the corresponding day of the week. So for example, if the user enter one, we want to display Monday. If you enter two, we are going to display Tuesday. If you enter three, we are going to display Wednesday up to seven, which we are going to display Sunday. So this means we have to have a condition. As we said in the lectures, normally we use the relational operators to form a, a logical conditions. So if the condition is true, the statement that follows will be executed. If the condition is false, we are going to skip. Uh, the statement will be skipped. So we have the if, which is one way, then we have if else. If else means if the condition is true, the if section will be executed. But if the condition is false, then the else section will be executed. But in this, our question, we have more than two conditions we have up to seven conditions. So we can use the multiple if else statement, which we normally call the if, lf, elif, etc. Or we can also use the switch statement. So let's see how we can solve this problem. First, we need to ask the user to enter the number for the day. So the user can enter between values from one to seven. We use the input function again, we ask the user to enter any number between one to seven. We assign the number to a variable named day. Now, this is where we start with the selection control structure. Now, here we say we're going to determine the name of the day of the week based on the value that the user enter. So for example, if the day that the user enter is equal to one, then we are going to print Monday. So we're going to display Monday. Now we have a lectures on the relational operators. Uh, one equal sign means assignment. So for example, here we are using one equal sign. It means whatever that we enter, any value that we enter, we are going to assign today. But if I want to check what value is in the day, then I'll use two equal sign. So that's what we call the equality sign. So if the day is equal to one, we are going to print Monday. And again, we cover the lectures on this, so you can look at the lectures video about the relational operators. We have equal, not equal, greater than, or greater than or equal, less than or less than equal, up to six different relational operators. Now, if the user enter two, then we are going to display Tuesday. We're going to print Tuesday. Here we use if, elif, 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 and the last option will be the default. So if the user didn't enter any value between one to seven, and he enter any other value, then we just want to display an error message. So here we see an error, and we tell the user, please enter a number in the range one to seven. Now in this program, after we enter, let's say we enter eight, this message is going to display, but we cannot enter there. We don't have no second option to enter a new value again. But this is just a statement that, now when we cover the next chapter, which is loops, now we can have this statement, selection statement inside the loop, and we can use a, any sentinel value that if the value is not between one to seven, then we're going to give the user option to enter new value. But again, here, we are going to enter only one value. For example, if the user enter four, then if they equal to four, then we are going to print Thursday. Uh, if they equal to six, we are going to print Saturday. Now, if the days are not between one to seven, then any value we enter, we are going to print error, please enter a number in the range of one to seven. So in this case, we have to execute the program again and then we enter the value between one to seven. So again, this is just a basic problem to see an example how we use the selection statement, especially here we are using the 
multiple selection statement if elif else. Now let's look at the second problem. In the second problem, they say we should find the area of a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is the rectangle length times its width. So they gave us the formula. The formula of the area of a rectangle is the length times its width. Now here we are going to write a program that will ask for the length and also the width of the two rectangles. Then the program should tell the user which rectangle has a greater area or if the areas are the same. So this means we have to use selection statement again. So here, this program, we are going to find the area of two rectangles. And we know the formula of finding an area is the length times the width. So our first rectangle, uh, we're going to enter the length and the width. Then we find the area, second rectangle, length and the width, we find the area. Then we use the selection statement to compare the two areas, which one is greater, which one is lesser, or if they are the same. So yeah, we need some few variables to store our input, especially we need four variables that we're going to store the two lengths of the two rectangles and also the two width of the two rectangles. Then another two variable to store our area for first rectangle, the area for the second rectangle. Yeah, we name the area A for the first rectangle, area B for the, again, the second rectangle. Then length A with A for the first rectangle, let B with B for the again, second rectangle. So now we need to ask the user to enter the length and width for both rectangles. Uh, this time let's call the rectangles A and B. So here we say enter the length A for the first rectangle A. Now when the user enter the length, here we are going to do arithmetic operation, which will be multiplication. So we convert the value again to float and we assign it to length A variable. Then we get the width of length and the rectangle A. So we call it width A for the variable. We use the input function to ask the user to enter the width of the first rectangle or re rectangle A. We convert it to float. So now we can find the area of a rectangle A. But here, let's also enter the length for rectangle B and also the width for rectangle B. Now we finish with all the four inputs. We calculate the area for rectangle A, which will be length A times width A. We assign it to area A. Then we calculate the area for rectangle B, which will be length B times width B. We assign it to area B. Now we have the two areas now. We can use the if, elif else to compare. Now here we have three different options. We want to know if rectangle A area is greater than rectangle B area, or rectangle B area is greater than rectangle A, or both of them are the same, equal. So this means we have to use if, elif else. Now this problem again, we solve a similar problem like this in chapter two, finding the area of a rectangle, we get the input of the length and the width and the area of a rectangle will be again length times the width. Or to find the parameter of a rectangle, we still need the length and the width and it will be two times the length plus two times the width. So now we know input, process and output will finish. Now here, this is our main new topic for this chapter. We print the area A and area B values. Area A means the area for rectangle A, area B means the area for rectangle B. Now we are checking. If area A is greater than area B, then we are going to display that area A is greater than area B. And if area A is less than area B, then we are going to say area B is greater than area A. Else, area A is equal to area B. Because if area A is not greater than area B, and also area B is not greater than area A, that means they are the same. So those are the three options. Again, one more time. In this problem, we are looking for area of two rectangles. We were able to get the input, 
for the length and the width for both rectangles. So we were able to calculate the area for both rectangles, which will be length A times width A, length B times width B. We display the result. Again, using the format function, we format the area result to two decimal places. Then we are going to check which of the area is greater or lesser, or if both of them are the same. So this is where we use the selection statement. If area A is greater than area B, then we are going to display that area A is greater than area B. And if, if area A is less than area B, this means area B is greater than area A. Else, if these two conditions are false, then the last option means area A is equal to area B. So this will be the conclusion of our first lectures, or I'll say the lab work on chapter three, part one. So again, see you in the next uh, lab work.